Boilermakers control the tap, and Allen Eldred, 6-1 sophomore from Fort Wayne. Working it into the corner right away, an air ball three by Cornell, but Cardinal for the putback in the early Purdue lead. Well, the Hoosiers began in a man-to-man. -man. That time, it didn't block out. They give up 13 offensive rebounds a game, and against a team like Purdue that loves the inside game, that's going to mean trouble if they don't keep them off the board. Jason Collier. So already, he's as productive as he was in that first get together. That's just a sign of that Hoosier confidence that they've displayed over the last couple of weeks. Cornell's pass. Did Austin get timeout call before he went over the midcourt stripe? And it is a 20 second Purdue timeout. This is a remarkable job of thinking, literally on the run by Chad Austin. 13 points per game over his last five for Collier out of Springfield, Ohio. Cardinal. And the jumper right is out. It's rebounded by Guyton, and Indiana will crank up their running game. Stolen by Cardinal. It's a good thought by Guyton. We talked about him pushing the ball up the floor, but again, you have to make good decisions in transition. Lob inside to Brad Miller, and he answers Collier slam with one of his own. We talked about the high-low situation and how Brad Miller is able to lock his man. If they want to front him, Miller makes him pay. Miller, who leads the Boilermakers in five different statistical categories, sees Collier dribble that one off his leg. Neil Reed draws the Austin assignment. Eldridge for a three-pointer. A much bigger weapon beyond the arc than he is inside of it. Alan Eldridge, 20 of 50 now on three. Miller blocking Miller. Brad gets the rejection of Charlie Miller. And Austin, the first man up the floor to give Purdue a 9-2 lead. Well, Purdue, not really a great interior defensive team, but they will block shots. In conference play, they lead the conference in shots blocked. Got the two big guys in the middle. They don't have to get off their feet. It's just good hands and good positioning. So after the opening slam by Collier, Purdue answers in a 7-0 run in progress. Knocked out by Eldridge, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Bob Knight hoping to get win number 699 in his career, 32 years, including the time at Army. Only seven Division I coaches with 700 career wins. And Gene Cady with a couple of milestones in his sights, his 400th career win in year 19 and his 200th Big Ten victory. He is fifth all time in the Big Ten. Guyton off the spin with a right hand finish. One of his first two. One of the things Purdue has to do is pressure A.J. Guyton, make sure that he can't make the entry passes inside. But what you give up is becoming a victim of his quickness. Mike Robinson has checked in for Eldridge. Cardinal driving past Collier, and it's 11-4 Purdue. Ryan Cardinal so effective from the top of the key. That's what makes the high-low with him at the top so effective. You can't drop off him. Backhand missed by Reed, and Miller misses the follow. Andre Patterson will be called for traveling. As Eldridge returns, and you see the good shooting start. Spelling the seven-point Boilermaker lead early. They've hit their last four in a row, in fact, from the field. Nice job of spreading the floor, allowing guys to work one-on-one -on -one for good. Cardinal goes hard after his own miss and draws the foul. Austin, Katie says, playing as well as any guard in the country. And he thinks should be right there in the discussion about Big Ten Player of the Year, along with Andre Woolridge, Bobby Jackson. Some others. Neil Reed picks up his first person. One month ago today, Purdue embarrassed Indiana with a career effort by Brad Miller, 34%, the worst shooting effort of the year by the Hoosiers, 16 field goals and 22 turnovers. Summer is uh, their evening of misery at Mackey. Austin missing, hustling rebound taken by Robinson, and he takes Charlie Miller in, blocked by Jason Collier and another Indiana foul. So Mike Robinson on the line, 6'6 freshman. The selection committee you'd think would look uh, very hard at a team that's tied for second in the Big Ten. They've overcome a bad month of December with uh, some good conference victories at Illinois, certainly one in the first Indiana game, the one they really hang their hats on.
Well, including this game, they're going to have to beat the Michigan's Iowa, Illinois, sandwiched in between Northwestern. That's a pretty tall task for this young Purdue team. Very young, and they predictably took some time to find their personality. That was uh, basically behind all the December struggles, blowout losses at Oklahoma and TCU. Right now, Purdue changing up the defense is a 1 3 1 zone, trying to confuse Indiana. And Charlie Miller climbing way up on the ladder to guide in the miss by Neil Reed. But see, you don't have to think about those types of offensive rebounds. You see him, you go get him. Miller then with the rejection of Robinson. And the three to catch it in. Charlie Miller playing the role of Star Club. We've said it before in previous Hoosier games, best athlete on the floor for Indiana. Makes a lot of things happen on both ends of the floor. Three by Eldridge to quiet him down at least for the time being. And two threes now for Allen Eldridge. Who is just a 21% shooter inside the arc this year. Guyton for three. And the race for the loose ball out of bounds off Collier. I think they each had a hand on it. You saw Cardinal come out. He's replaced by another freshman, Gary McQuay, 6'8", shot-blocking specialist, appropriately from Gary, Indiana. Eldridge, and short on this three-pointer. And again, another offensive rebound, this time a, a hustle rebound by McQuay, tracking it down in the corner. Second chance opportunities is what Purdue thrives upon. They're not a great offensive team, but you, you don't give any good team more than one chance at the hoop. Cornell also back in for the Boilermakers. That was their fourth offensive rebound. Fifth. They get five as Cornell chases down the miss by McQuay. And they'll reset with Eldridge. Stop and go drive. Pass. Unable to bring it in was Cornell. On the deuce, they're underway in New Jersey, Providence, and Rutgers. As Collier gets free from Brad Miller, who paid no attention to him that time on the low block. That time a breakdown defensively in changing defenses. Purdue might have kind of outsmarted themselves. Not everyone on the same page. Already five different Boilermakers with points. Well, it's been Collier and Miller for the most part doing the Indiana scoring. Air ball hook. Purdue now one for their last six from the field. Behind the back, Reed shovels it underneath. Collier misses the reverse. And breaking away, Austin blocked by Charlie Miller. Looked like an easy two for Austin. Reed misses at the other end. Smartly, Purdue slows the pace a little bit. As we mentioned, Indiana 86 points average over the last three games. They're kind of enjoying running it up and down, but do not that type of team. An excellent half-court execution team, but right now the pace has gotten out of hand for them. They've got to regain control of the tempo. Nice up fake for Collier. With the rejection, it ends up McQuay laying it in. In regaining the control of the tempo in the half-court, what Purdue's able to do is to cover the board. That's why they've been so effective offensive rebounding thus far. Key to their game, arguably. Guyton goes up and draws the contact. One of the things Gene Cady talked about was his fear of Indiana's depth. But he's holding a secret of his own. He's got a pretty deep team, albeit young team himself. And he's been able to display that today, bringing in a lot of guys back and forth, keeping guys fresh, and not really losing anything on the scoreboard. A pair from A.J. Guyton. He has four along with Collier, Miller with five, so they are the three Hoosiers with points as they again trail by five. Austin pulls up high floater. McQuay from behind Miller got the block and it comes off to Andre Patterson, who's been pretty quiet so far in his return to the starting lineup. Sprained an ankle a couple of weeks back at Iowa. 14 minutes off the bench for him Sunday after missing the previous two games altogether. And here Cardinal, a nice job of stepping up from the help side, putting his body on the line. Spends more time on the floor than anybody other than the janitor. And in fact, that was one of the nominations. They had a nickname contest in West Lafayette. <laughs> the winner of a, a, a worthy win, I think, for Citizen Payne. Excellent uh, 
excellent nickname for Brian Cardinal, who, appropriately enough, is patched just about from head to toe. Citizen Payne, I have just one word for you. Bruise, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Three by Austin. Dipped around, and Patterson did not see Guyton until there was a defender back. He'll still take and hit the open three. So far, it's just been kind of a back and forth battle, and who's going to control the tempo in this ball game? Hey, hey. Miller turned away by Patterson, goes to the hook. Cornell almost with the left hand guide in and out of bounds off the Boilermakers. Again, we talked about the battle of control and the tempo. Purdue much more comfortable playing half court, grinding it out, going inside. Indiana seizing the opportunities when they can, pushing the ball up and finding holes in Purdue's transition deep. Robinson against Guyton in the Peoria matchup. Guyton too quick for him, goes right past him. Well, you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. You can play him tight, and he blows by you. You fall off him, and he drops the J. Cardinal ending a Purdue slump where they had missed 10 of 11 shots from the field. But they survived that drought and still with a two-point lead. Guyton again, and this time Miller's there waiting. They were uh, high school rivals in Peoria. And it surprised a lot of people to, to see this rather short list of schools that recruited A.J. Guy. Did not play on an outstanding team last year and did not have overwhelming numbers. But he was uh, a late signee who was turned into one of their best guys ever. And he got a lot of recruiting assistance right now trying to hide their heads in their recruiting boat. They missed the good one. Michael Lewis up the floor with a loose ball. Guiding up to 11 points. Lewis picked up by Eldridge. 20-20 tie, just past the halfway mark of the first half. Gotten just off on about a 23-footer that time, and a rebound foul will go against Indiana. Purdue, meanwhile, with Austin resting and yet to get on track. Cardinal misses the leaner. And Charlie Miller fouled after his rebound by Cornell. And speaking of Austin, he gets ready to check back in as Miller goes back door and Lewis stops him. The tip that we had previously given to Miller, by the way, they officially give to Mandeville. So that's now five for Miller in Indiana with a two-point lead. Cardinals pass chased down by Eldridge just before he goes over the timeline. And it's Robinson open. Jess does get the roll for the three. We talked about poise. Purdue has the hold. It's poise in face of the overplaying, denied the wing defense that Indiana's playing. It's hard for Purdue to get their offense started when they can't enter the ball. And any three is gravy from Robinson is just 16% this year. Zinovich with a miss. And then Cardinal goes out of his way to fall over Mujer Zinovich's fallen figure. As I said, every team needs a guy like that. Playing in the trenches. Way wide on the front end, though. Lewis out to Collier, who's back in. A little bit long. But the long arms almost... Chase down the rebound. It's out of bounds off Austin. Still Indiana's. Well, Charlie Miller is talking to Jason Collier about that shot, probably telling him we can get a better shot than that. You know, again, exerting some, some leadership out there. Miller and Jr. talking to the freshman as we see Brian Cardinal taking a seat. Both appropriate and very fortunate for Brian Cardinal that his dad is a trainer. <laughs> the Illinois head trainer, in fact, Rod Cardinal. Well, he sees the, the beauty of the body's recuperative power. He has no fear. Good foul here, Brad Miller. He interrupts what was going to be a crowd-pleasing slam dunk by Collier. The Hoosiers taking a page out of Purdue's book and spreading the floor on this pick and roll. You take a look at Miller too far on the high side. The only recovery he could make was the foul, but a nice job by Collier in taking a page out of Miller's book and locking him. Jason hot from the foul line lately. 11 straight free throws, 15 of his last 17. When you watch both of these teams play, Dave, the one thing you know you're going to see 
good fundamental big man play. Indiana fans wanted but didn't get a foul call. After McClay is rejected, here comes Reed. 23-23 game. We go under the eighth minute mark in the first half. It's sold out Assembly Hall, 17,000 plus in Bloomington. Indiana tries to avenge a 17-point blowout a month ago at Purdue. And you see the freshmen account for almost half their scoring. Indiana is next with almost 44% of their scoring coming from the first year men. Well, with Purdue, it's almost been the baptism of fire. These freshmen have had to learn early because they've had to make significant contributions. And in a game like this, it's good to see them keep their poise thus far. This crowd is into this ball game. A lesser team could fold. That will get them even more into it. Patterson's first points. Indiana back in front by two. That's been their largest lead so far. Take a look at a nice job. Look at Neil Reed way outside overplaying Eldridge to keep him from receiving the ball. Well, the Bakers at one point up as many as nine. Austin still with only two, but Robinson follows. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Well, what has to happen now, particularly from Indiana, is they've got to be able to start getting the ball pushing it up in transition, regaining control of this tempo. That's where they seem to fare best when they're playing a 94-foot game with Guyton at the point. Andre Patterson, who started for the first time in quite a while after his two leg injuries. Held to just two first half points. Guyton with 13, one better than Cardinal, who leads Purdue. And that deflection off Cornell picked up by Austin. Four on one break and Austin will finish. Nice job by Cornell in drawing the defender to him. Again, a question of poise by the freshman. Guyton and Collier miss. Tipped over to Cardinal. Remember, it was the crisp opening minutes for Purdue that at one time opened up a nine-point lead for the Boilermakers. Austin missing the three. Brad Miller out fighting Charlie Miller for the rebound. Austin, though, still looking for his first successful three tonight. Alan Eldridge finds Austin the fall away, rebounded by Patterson. Austin having a tough shooting night, primarily because he's been forced off his spot and having to beat people off the dribble. And it's done most of that yeoman defensive work right there. Neil Reed for Indiana. And the free throw streak that's alive for Reed. Now 33 of his last 37 before that miss. This rivalry, you would think, Lynn, means a little bit more to the guys for Purdue because they're a much more Indiana-dominated group of recruits. Reed played a couple of high school years in Indiana but finished up in Metairie, Louisiana. And Michael Lewis is really the only Indiana product for the Hoosiers who grew up knowing what this rivalry means. And certainly, I'm sure that a lot of guys were, were recruited by the Hoosiers as much as they were Purdue. And that was part of the line. Last three in this series have all gone to Purdue and four of the last five. They are the only team in the Big Ten with an all-time winning record against the Hoosiers. So don't think these games don't have any impact on recruiting in-state. Nice catch. Jason Collier, though, blows a two-footer. It comes off to Patterson, and he throws it away intended for Reed. Very uncharacteristic of Andre Patterson on the offensive rebound. He turns and passes before he even locates his teammate. Series surprisingly isn't really even close over the years. 99-70 in favor of the Boilermakers. Miller turned away. Guyton turns it up. And is moved to the five side by Eldridge. In and out by Patterson. And the Hoosiers now have misfired on their last nine shot attempts. Still just trailing by one, though, 39-38. Patterson stripping Cardinal point blank. Crossover dribble pass. Miller for the slam dunk. Cardinal protects it from them this time. They work it inside for Brad Miller, who's been held to just two. And it's Cardinal who is having the big offensive show. 14 points for Brian Cardinal. 
And you also saw an example of why Brad Miller is the leading assist guy on the Purdue Boilermakers. He recognizes that the fence is focused on him and he's willing to give it up, make guys better. Reed chases down his own head pass inside Collier. Interesting. I wonder why Brad Miller is gambling like that. Patterson now all of a sudden trying to make every play. Miller on the line. The foul is Patterson's third personal. Mike Robinson has come on for a nine point first half. Some big moments. Moving a three for Purdue. And right now Purdue setting up for some full court pressure. The substitutions to bring in some fresh legs to make it effective. Right and around McQuay who has come on. And AJ got him too quick for everybody. 15 points. Reed strips McQuay out of bounds. Well, so much for the full court pressure. You get a water bug like A.J. Guyton, it's pretty hard to pin him down. Purdue never really had a shot at doubling him. Reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. 25 plus per game in their three game winning streak. Robinson misses, comes all the way out to Allen Eldridge. Burns on Guyton. Now Austin look inside from McQuay. Robinson it is up. Couldn't quite get it to rattle in. And this will be Charlie Miller with the personal. So Miller joining Patterson each with three. Robinson had been starting a number of, of the games for Purdue, but you know, Jerron Cornell has shown that he's a pretty effective player too, so they've been pretty much interchangeable. Purdue up most of the way. Patterson starting to become a factor though early in the second half. And the parade and McDonald's nice. all America. Brian Cardinal. 18 points for Cardinal, seven better than his average. And a nice job by Alan Eldridge in penetrating, beating Guyton off the dribble, putting a lot of pressure defensively and finding someone. It's a nice little weapon in the arsenal to be able to have as we go down the stretch. Cardinal has already equaled his season end career high with the 18. Patterson now making just about every play for the losers. Well, we mentioned that Andre Patterson has to sustain that emotion, and if that's going to drive him to do the superhuman things he's been able to do thus far, so be it if you're a loser fan. The lasting memory for him this year, that 39 he put on Duke with the preseason NIT. Charlie Miller stands tall underneath. And it's Skyton spinning away from Eldridge, draws the foul. If you don't play him early and deny him the ball and allow him in the paint that deep, turn out the lights. Skyton, speaking of deep. Second three tonight for Guyton, Indiana's largest lead at four. Purdue has faced this crossroads earlier in the first half. Did a nice job of weathering the storm with good execution. Miller there to bail out Robinson and draw the contact from Jason Collier. Well, 31 points last game against Michigan. He's been the catalyst. He has forced his team to run with him. And in doing so, creating an awful lot of easy opportunities with his penetration. And in a need situation, he's capable of beating anybody off the dribble who guards him. That's a very valuable player to have. And this is just his second free throw all night. And he knocks them both down and cuts it back to two. But again, to talk about Miller and to talk about Austin, neither one of them having good nights from the field, but they're still putting forth the effort. They're moving the ball. They're making things happen, allowing other guys to step up. Other guys in this instance, Robinson and Cardinal. Reach pass stolen by Cardinal. That time, the three-quarter court pressure dropped back into half court. Not good recognition by the Hoosiers. And ready for that high low pass got a hand on it but out of bounds off of Indiana still Purdue ball. Jerron Cornell misses the three-pointer. That'll be over the back on Brad Miller. His third 
and the fans seeing him toss that ball hope that they'll tack on a tee, but they won't. Good Patterson can stay high. Bounces one inside for Collier. Tough angle almost behind the backboard. Well, we talked about how good Collier can be when he faces up. Patterson taking a page from Cardinals playbook to draw the charge. There's more to play in this game besides scoring points. And Brad Miller's valuable. He's got to stay on the floor. Patterson, though, turns it over. And then as he undercuts Ken Austin and going for the loose ball, Patterson will be called for his fourth. At some point, both teams are going to have to grab a handle on how this game's being called. This three, Kai Miller, rebound Charlie Miller. Another bit of contact right there, but no call. Got to be impressed with McQuay, though, who got the block that led to Patterson's fourth foul. He's fourth in the Big Ten in blocks, plays just 18 minutes per game. It's amazing. This is a blocking foul. Patterson still showing the effects of the knee and the ankle. One on uh, each leg bothering him. Indiana, the number two free throw shooting team in the country, almost 77%. And they've shot their way now to their biggest margin of six. Cardinal now having to take over even more so on the low block with Miller sitting with four fouls. And this is where the loss of Brad Miller puts a lot of pressure on the front line of Purdue. Miller, although not having a good night, is still a threat. And Indiana has to honor that threat. Cardinal, as you say, is taking over. Paul here. And somehow missed that one, but it's all the way out to Reed. McQuay's intimidation, that was a factor. So that would be the third different leg injury for him to have to contend with. But his club up by four as he's replaced by Richard Vanderbilt. Boy, this game really getting called tight now. Austin hit with a hand check. His second. Well, they've certainly shown that that's the way that they win ball games. They get to the line more than and, and make more free throws than their opponents have attempted at least up to this point it's even boy cardinal now up to 22 points as austin continues not to be a factor and miller sits with four fouls cardinal has completely taken over the offensive show for purdue long two they say for mandeville but purdue has to have seen the hoosiers enough to recognize that richard mandeville has that kind of range for a seven footer can't just leave him out there thinking he's a pass. Cornell. Reed flew at him and forced a miss. That's a fresh mistake. You got to take the contact, draw the foul, and then concentrate on putting the ball in the basket. Cardinal goes to the deck, and this will be an offensive foul, and it's going to go against Mandeville for Indiana. Trainer, so he has more pain in his body than the rest of the team combined. There's Gary McQuay. Six points, cuts it to four. Got to be impressed by this young Purdue team. Six freshmen. Taking all this crowd and this Indiana team can muster. And McQuay finishes to cut it back to two. And McQuay fully under control. Not a cut from the dribble and the ball that far but recognized the defender there and made it difficult on him. Cornell this time. Pass Guyton's. Man, you call it. You talk about Coy out of their defense. And we always say defense creates momentum. Purdue has done it right here. Six unanswered Purdue points. The last two on midcourt steals and breakaways. Green pass Cornell off balance. Tipped over to Robinson, and here comes Carvel as he ends up gas to jam on Miller. No. <laughs> We're embracing for a collision. <laughs> Not enough, in fact, in the tank to even think about it, apparently. Actually, a very good decision. Again, confident in their half court set. This is where Purdue excels. 
Eight on the shot clock. Mike Robinson. Underneath, Cardinal with three. Up, and it's a hell of a ball. And Mandeville foils the clock. Purdue now out of 20s, and you remember back to the first half where Chad Austin called one to save an over and back violation. So they do have two full timeouts remaining, but no 20s the rest of the way. In the end, it was two 20s and two full. And remember the score back then was 2-2. Two -two. Possession really wasn't as critical as it will be now. Three straight Hoosier turnovers. Cornell driving it deep. Robinson for the tip. Once more, Robinson, two seven footers to deal with. Mandeville held the ball. He's just 6'6, six, six, and that was a flat footed play by the seven foot Mandeville. Not that difficult for him. Collier knocked out by Cardinal, who got him on the arm. This is going to be three on Brian Cardinal. Third personal on a night where he's put together. Career best offensive showing 22 points. Way wide on the front end by Collier, and it was off. Oh no, good break, Indiana. After a timeout, they get it back. And you question again Purdue's depth, but they've been able to use young players to step in. Gary McQuay done an excellent job replacing Brad Miller inside. Just like that, forcing people to change shots, making it more difficult for guys like Jason Collier. Indiana now about three and a half minutes without a point as the defense has brought Purdue back with a chance to lead rattling it in Robinson 13 points and I'm getting the feeling right now I'm watching that particular play with Robinson Purdue really feels that they can win this ball game four turnovers the last five possessions for now ahead to Robinson you can just tell by the way they're carrying themselves out there at this point at least but this is no, I'm happy to be here. They really feel they can push this thing out. At some point, I think Katie reminded him, look, you wiped up the floor with this team at Mackey, remember? Yeah, this is Bloomington, but you've done it before. Nice job by Cardinal to help out. Stop Reed's penetration along the baseline. This now a 10-0 Boilermaker run on plays just like this one. Well, Guyton dribbles the ball off of his foot. Again, he's had to play an awful lot of minutes. You can expect him to be tired. And again, it's indicative of that ebb and flow. Indiana, at points and times, grabs hold of the tempo, runs it the way they want. Guyton has his way. Indiana stretches it out to a six-point lead in this half, the biggest lead they've had so far. And then Purdue comes right back playing defense with variety types of pressure as well as good half-court execution to come back and hold Indiana scoreless until these two free throw. Which Collier coolly puts down the draw of the Hoosiers back within two. Normally when Indiana's had bad stretches, it's come late first half, early second half. It's come middle of the second half tonight. But maybe they've weathered here. Key stop, now Reed. Looking for room to penetrate. Miller, slightly bigger than Robinson. Mandeville. Collier right back to him. Well within his range. Cannot leave Mandeville open 14 feet or in because he will bury it. may now start to take over down the stretch. He's been quiet. Average 16.8 per game. That's fourth in the conference coming in. Six points on just two for 11 from the field. And now three for four from the line. 19, 16 of which came in the second half in the first meeting. And you can expect Indiana to come out now looking to attack areas where they think they can develop a weakness. Brian Cardinal is one of those guys they'd like to try to get out of the game. Look for them to try to exploit him, get it in the Collier, and maybe draw some fouls to get Cardinal out of the game. Nice job by Cardinal in fronting Collier. Good pressure on Dyke. 
And A.J. with the shot clock winding down had to make it on his own. Curtain. Here comes Cornell. Three on two break. Austin will be called for steps. Really look when they move Lauren Woods to the starting lineup like they may take off on a tear. But hasn't happened this way. And that's it from McQuay as he comes out. And Brad Miller back playing with four personals and 4.46 to go. They're going to be looking each time down to run something that's going to either get them fouled until the line that's going to get them an easy shot. And both teams should be doing that down the stretch. Problem is, in the, uh, Purdue won't have that double bonus situation yet. Next Indiana foul will finally put them in the one and one. Austin screened by Miller. Help came from Collier. Shot clock at 10. Robinson misses off the spin and it's Reed who cradles the rebound for the Hoosiers with a one point lead and the ball as we near the four minute mark. And that's one of the reasons Neil Reed has the ball. They're playing a much more deliberate style. Guyton will touch it when they need a breakdown. I love Mandeville. Can't get it on a perfect setup by Collier, but he is fouled, and that's three on Robinson. They had that stretch of four turnovers and five possession, but the rest of the game, they've been pretty good at protecting the ball. Both teams just five turnovers at the half. 10 at the moment for uh, Purdue and 13 committed by Indiana. The second best free throw team in the nation and well above that tonight. They talked about points in the game when Purdue had the weather the storm. They've done it twice before. This is the most crucial. Cardinal takes the three, and that leaves Cornell open, and that's a two for Jerron Cornell. Temperament well suited to this type of action, according to Katie. Says like, like a golfer. I wish I had his temperament, says Katie. Reed has Cardinal trying to draw another charge, and Reed is hurt. Three pointer in and out by Austin. Guyton fouled by Cornell. And A.J. Guyton, seven for seven free throws. And if you're Gene Cady and you're recognizing the substitution, and hopefully for, for his sake that uh, Lewis is going to be guarding Chad Austin, do you go to Austin and not having a good night? Purdue has not had a three on their last seven tries, and in fact at all here in the second half. Cardinal career high 22 points 11 blocks a season high for the Hoosiers 24 points from Guyton his last two free throws open up a five point Hoosier lead and it's been through defense that Indiana has retaken control of the tempo right now this one on Charlie Miller is his fourth team seven so Austin in the one and one Reed one of the juniors out at least for the time being and replaced by Lewis, a freshman. Well, the two most important positions out on the floor right now, the center and the point guard for the Hoosier, who's just a man by freshman. They've got to step up big time to maintain this lead. Two fifty to go in a three point game. Shot clock working its way down to ten. As the ball inevitably works its way back to Guy. Now Collier. Cardinal with three fouls. Skip pass open. Mandeville. Somebody stop him. I mean, you cannot leave a guy like Mandeville who's known for that shot wide open. Defense too far over trying to help against Collier's drive. Cardinal had him under control. Ties his season high. Ten for Mandeville. Miller not quite tipped out. Eldred sets up Austin. First three-pointer of the second half for Purdue. Chad Austin throwing the rest of this game out the window. He recognized the last two minutes has got to be his. They've missed seven straight from beyond the arc. Miller back to the 
direction. Guyton tried to answer. Running rebound for Austin. Foot race with Lewis. Chad Austin goaltended, and it goes anyway, even though Miller got a hand on it. Reed, as we said, back for the Hoosiers. Guyton driving past Austin. Nice into Antone. And you're right about knifing in. Cardinal set up for the charge, and Guyton just skipped right by him. 26 for the Big Ten player of the week. Austin has scored the last seven Purdue points, and he gets helped out here by Cornell. Well, you're right. You take a look at both of these freshmen. Nothing but ice water. Doesn't appear to be any freshman left on this floor tonight. And check Chad Austin's third personal. Well, you don't almost believe that these guys were born to take these shots. They're acting like it. Guyton has not missed on nine free throws. Purdue and Indiana, they're out of 20s. Two full for Purdue, one for Indiana. Key right there is the fact that Indiana remains probably the rest of the way, the only team in the two-shot double bonus. They lead by two, 44 seconds. Got to create some room for Austin to work right here. Not much room, but he draws the foul with 38.3. Reed picks up number three, eighth against the team, and Austin, who is five of six from the line tonight, and has seven of the last nine, despite a very poor first 30 minutes for Purdue. Four of 14 from the field. If I'm them and I'm Gene Carey, I'm going to try to give at least some token pressure, make Indiana think about what they're doing, but certainly I'm not going to gamble and I'm not going to let A.J. Guyton beat me off the of penetration. So that happened in Ann Arbor on Sunday. It's reworking it up against Eldridge. Difference of three seconds on the two clocks. 23 to shoot. That's exactly what we had. Token pressure. Now it's going to be flat out hard nosed half court defense. And once again, the focus on Guyton because he's the creator. Mandeville over to screen Austin. Guyton with it. Eight to shoot. Another Mandeville screen. Here's the double. Oh, got the baseline. High off the glass. Collier misses the tip. Eldridge with the loose ball as time runs out in regulation. And we head to overtime in Wilmington. Roller makers have had their hard hats on all night. We were tied at the half at 37 all. We are now tied at the end of two halves at 77 all and ready for overtime now. And at least as far as the Boilermakers are concerned, they hope. Continue a stretch for the NCAA's typical play by Cardinal. At least tried to make the play, but it came up a little bit short. It's out of bounds to Indiana. We talk about hustle play again. Ryan Cardinal has no regard for his body. I mean, that, that's just no. And at this point in time, in an overtime situation, you know, I fear for the guy. Therefore, the, the official nickname now is voted by the citizens of West Lafayette, Citizen Payne. And living up to it tonight. People in foul trouble out there. Miller with four, Eldridge four, Cornell four, all for Purdue. And the turnover to start overtime. For Indiana, Charlie Miller four and Patterson four. We haven't seen Andre Patterson in quite some time after uh, an apparent leg cramp problem in the middle of the second half. Brad Miller's played quite a good stretch here in the second half with four. Cornell to Cardinal already a career high night and add three more for Cardinal. Well, that puts the pressure on right away. Usually the first score in overtime creates a sense of urgency. This by Guyton. Collier just barely missed time the leap. Would have been a wide open tip in, but it came down on the rim again. Cornell had a toe on the line, and that's two. And for the first time this evening, I've seen the Hoosiers hang their heads just for a brief moment after that score. It's almost as though they let up for a second. They've got to regain their composure and come back. Good 
Well, plenty of time to be patient. Almost three and a half minutes to go. Absolutely. Bill. Three. There you go. Right there. Cut it to two. It was only for a moment, but that's something that you just can't allow, and you certainly don't want the other team to see you do that. Now a season high for Richard Mandeville, the junior from Pasadena, 13 points. Eldridge way out, just misses on what would have been a three. Good recognition by Miller. I don't know, Eldridge is a decent three-point shooter, but that may not have been the shot that they wanted at this particular time. Paul Deere misses a three. Jason Collier, 6 of 12 from beyond the arc, but I'm not sure if that was the time for one. Guys getting a little three crazy here. Settle back down. Both teams will recognize that it's a half-court execution that's going to get them a win. Three by Mandeville, his only successful three-point try of the season. Able to pick a better time. Cut it to 82-80. Cornell beyond the arc. What freshman? I'm telling you, there are no freshmen out there. I'm supposed to do this, is what he's telling Coach. I'm supposed to do it. That golfer's temperament again that Gene Katie loves and wishes. Dead solid carpet, right? That, that last shot was. So we hit two minutes. Boilermakers by five. Reed draws the foul. We'll see if that's going to be it for Miller, who goes nose to nose with Vanderbilt. That four by Miller tying his season low. Reed. The man they want in this situation on the line as you see Andre Patterson finally back in the game. And you got to wonder how effective Patterson's going to be. He sat out a long time towards the end of regulation with seemingly a Charlie horse. And he's still running with a bit of a limp right here. I, I just wonder if he's going to be effective. They have him on the play. Charlie Miller, now much bigger than Austin, has that key matchup. Got five inches on it and forces the miss short. Comes up with the rebound. And as we said for Purdue, it's going to boil down the defense. They've got to make the stop. McQuay, the best defender as far as the big men are concerned. Long by Patterson. Collier above the fray for the ball. Guy who won the overtime game Sunday at Michigan. Sets up a three by Miller. I don't know what Charlie Miller's eating when he's home, but he better keep eating it. He's become a madman from behind the three-point arc. First point since the first half for him. McQuay answers with a hook. Mercy. Another non-freshman freshman. In the last home game. Miller was a madman, and he's picking up here in overtime. 45 seconds, Purdue by three, thanks to the McQuay hook. Gotten thinking hard about a three, as did Reed. Patterson has got to be cold after that long stretch on the bench. Just able to save that possession as we go under 10 to shoot. Three by Gotten. Second game in a row, a career effort for A.J. Guyton. And he forced that one. Nowhere else to go. Do I hear double OT? Ten seconds. Austin against Miller. Austin to win it. Yes! With six tenths of a second. And the long inbounds tipped over to Patterson, who misses at the buzzer. And the Boilermakers on the buzzer beater by Chad Austin have swept Indiana. Four straight, five of the last six in the series have gone to the Boilermakers, whose NCAA hopes are very much alive. Well, we said that Chad Austin, not having a good regulation towards the end, decided he was going to take over, and take over he did. Purdue put it in his hands, and they were the good hands. Another look at it from down low, a little off balance, but off the dribble. And as the old Herman's Hermit song would go, there was kind of a hush. <laughs>
all over this arena. All over the Hoosiers world tonight as they fall in overtime. 18 for Austin, 14 in the second half, and the overtime, including the game winner.